There's a couple ways we find our clients, and uh, one is our big dance agency audition for Block, and we actually just had one a couple weeks ago, and um, it's, you know, we rent out a huge dance studio, and we call in whoever wants to come. We look at kids all, or look at talent all day long. We start at uh, seven years old, and we, you know, we audition all the way up to, you could be 80 years old. We look for <laughs> all ages of dancers, but that takes an entire day, and we bring our choreographers there, and all the agents from Block are sitting there in a row, and the choreographers teach a routine, and then we make cuts throughout the day. So you're, we kind of just process of elimination, and you know, people that we need, we keep you to the end, and then we decide if we're gonna be able to fit you into our roster. Um, one thing I wanna say is that people that don't have good pictures or they you know, didn't take any time to prep for this dance audition, a lot of times we will pass on them because we worry that they're not gonna be organized enough or anything. If you can't get your organization and your tools together to come to an agency audition, when are you gonna do it? You know, So that's, that's our thinking. So sometimes we have to pass on those people even though they're really, really talented. So it's really important to get your stuff together. The other way that we sign clients is by referral. And that's obviously very easy for us, but uh, we have a lot of very talented choreographers that will refer dancers to us. You know, maybe they just did a music video with them and they loved the way that they were on set and they thought they were very professional and they'll refer. And usually if we have somebody refer to us that we respect, you know, it's such a small industry, the dance world, um, we, it's, it's pretty easy for us to say yay or nay. We can, we can um, swoop them up, you know, if a, if a choreographer that we respect refers. Um, sometimes other talent that we represent will refer. Maybe, you know, their best friend is coming in from Nebraska and they want to get a dance agent. And as long as our client that's at a professional level gives us their word and usually we'll look at their headshot and resume and look at their footage, even sometimes footage from just a regular dance class, um, if they're referred, we will sign them. Um, probably the third way we get people is just by scouting. Sometimes we go to shows or sometimes we go speak at dance conventions and things like that and we can find um, some amazing talent at those places as well. We do keep the conflict thing in mind if we've got like specific types you know, two beautiful Latin girls that are between 18 and 25. If we've got two that are very similar, they have the same dance style. It actually, we don't want to become saturated with a certain type, but we definitely can rep more than one of just the same type because one girl could be on tour with Mariah Carey and we need the other one for a commercial that just popped up today. So there's there's definitely there's a lot of room in, in the entertainment business for us to place our dancers so it's it's not as much I don't think as um, not as much of a conflict there as far as having the same types of talent. We represent non-union talent and we also represent talent that are in SAG-AFTRA. But uh, there's another union that's actually called Dancers Alliance that um, is pretty prominent in the dance world. And basically what that is is it's just kind of a tool um, for us as agents and for dancers and for production companies or casting directors. It's a tool, it's a minimum scale that we use to base professional dancer rates off of, but it's not connected with SAG or AFTRA. So you could still be non-union actually and do uh, a project, but as long as the rates are paying the minimum Dancers Alliance scale, then we feel that that's fair. And you know, those are the terms that we've come to over the years of having um, dancers themselves get together and discuss what the minimum should be for each type of project. And we actually, the Dancers Alliance um, group actually works very closely with the unions. So a lot of times we'll have like union meetings with Dancers Alliance representatives, with us as the dance agents, and also with the union representatives themselves. So you can try to pursue being a professional dancer if you're 
in a smaller town across the U.S. It's almost next to impossible, however, to really get in there because obviously travel expenses, all the auditions that we as Block LA, you know, all the auditions and castings we work on are all based out of LA. So even if the job works in Thailand, the casting is still in LA. So you have to somehow get yourself to the big city here to audition and it's super last minute. The auditions don't come out usually until the evening before. So I have mainly like in that case where I've got some out of town people, they're usually under 18 and their parents usually invest in flying them out here or driving them out here to go to some of the bigger auditions. So we have a handful of people we rep that do not live in the big city, but Block uh, Agency, we have an audition, or we have, Block Agency has an office in New York. Um, We also have an office in Atlanta and Block Los Angeles. So um, LA's tends to be more of the commercial dance scene. That means more like, sort of like pop styles, I would say, or, um, you know, anything on TV or film usually, um, or commercials or print. But uh, when it comes to the stage, obviously Broadway um, in New York, we've got a lot of musical theater jobs going on out there in the New York office. So it's even though it's very different um, as far as the types of dancers, there's, you know, a lot more singers and things like that in New York. Um, Yes, the answer to that question is you need to live in one of the three cities where we have our offices basically to make it happen for yourself. 